when they came here, they used to um, play Reveille um, to get everybody up. And so my mom, she would sing, she said, it's time to get up, it's time to get up, it's time to get up in the morning. So then all the little kids would be singing that. And then eventually then the matron would come in and everybody get real quiet. So these are just even little little four or five, six year old kids, whatever, doing doing all that. But it was just just a good time, I think, and some of those that overshadow some of the, the other, other things that she experienced. Today we are in Stewart, Nevada. Uh, this is the, uh, the former Stewart Indian School, previously known as the Carson Indian School, that um, is situated very near um, Carson City. Stewart Indian School was actually a school that was similar to, to many other throughout the United States than that it was to, had a purpose for basically acculturating Indian people um, from the respective areas that were, were nearby. The schools were placed systematically throughout the United States. They were typically in remote areas, um, as the Stewart Indian School here was, was even though, although it's close to the, um, to the capital in Nevada, Carson City, it still it was very remote at the time, placed in a, in a location where we were on the outskirts of town, um, where um, they thought it would be kind of a, a pleasant setting for people um, to come and, and basically learn the, learn the new ways of life. You know, it was 240 acres that when it first um, was conveyed over to, to the federal government. They then ended up taking that and opening up the school in, in 1880 um, with the, um, the first class having 37 students. Um, and it had a capacity of 100 students at that time. It had a focus of educating the Indian people from Nevada specifically. So you had basically the three broader tribes of um, Washoe, Paiute, and then um, Shoshone people that, that were the three main groups that, that would come here. So, so the populations early on um, that were here in the very beginning, those 37 students, were representative of, of those three tribes. At the time when these schools were around, they were um, gathering up all the Indian kids from, from remote areas. They'd drive around, sometimes they'd be on a bus or, or whatever. My grandparents had, had Burn, burn down this house as, as, a, as a decoy. Um, they then, my grandfather had taken the kids to, um, to Hatchapi, California in, in a forested area. They were hiding out there until they got caught. And then when they got caught, they were sent to an orphanage um, in Bakersfield, California, then sent to Sherman Institute. Then they were found out that they were, they said, well, you're not um, California Paiutes, you're Nevada Paiutes, you need to go up to Stewart. When she first got here, it was very militaristic. And so she, they took her off of the, um, the train and, and she had to get um, suited up in her govy clothes, as she calls them, and, which were government issued clothes. And um, basically a uniform of sorts, hair was cut a certain way for, for girls, boys, you know, very, very short um, as well. Um, just as you're going into the military, you get all of your um, clothes, you come in here and you're then indoctrinated into the system. One of the first things that she, my, my mom remembers and would always talk about was when, when she was here and she was here to march and she didn't know, she's five years old and she didn't know what marching was and, and so she's trying to figure, figure out all that out. All these people are, are getting into an, you know, an alignment, they're, they're marching, they're following orders, they're doing whatever. And so, you know, she was with what the new, new um, recruits. So she was here and people would stop and then, you know, they'd bump into one another and then she'd get punished for, um, for um, not following orders and, and what have you. Um, and she, she would oftentimes talk about not only the regiment, but she would tell us when, when, when in school, they, they would teach you not to talk. You're not ever supposed to talk. You're not ever supposed to um, say anything. You, people there will teach you and, and, and they tell you what they want you to learn. And you don't question them. You never question anything they say. And it became somewhat problematic in, in, in many respects because people were not allowed to practice your culture. Here they would separate you with, with other people. So for example, um, I'm Southern Paiute and we have dialect differences down, down south, but it's also different than what they speak up north. Um, and so they would put people with different um, folks so you couldn't, you couldn't understand your neighbors. And then the common language became, became English. They were taken into a, an infirmary that they, they opened up out here to you go in there for your to get your medical treatment and things. There, there were activities going in there that, that people didn't know what was going on because people relied upon traditional medicines. They were brought up out in, in 
in the lands that they knew with the plants and the animals and, and the medicines, the doctoring that they did traditionally, um, to come here and have somebody else tell you that's not how you do it. We do it a different way and this is how we do it. And they were, they would have treatments up here. People would come up and get their little injections um, for for vaccines, and they were they were using the Indian kids a lot of times, often for for um, for guinea pigs. I'm um, trying to see what reactions it would have, and so there there's a little cemetery across the way, and and um, so you know my mom would talk about they would have some people would make it, some little kids made it, some little kids didn't, um, and they'd have little funerals across the way, and they'd have to go over there. They come back over here, and you get back into doing what doing what you're doing. But it wasn't all gloom and doom, and and even if there was a lot of negative things, there's a lot of positive memories. I mean, up here. Um, there, there were so many activities going on from trying to teach people not only the reading, writing, and arithmetic kinds of things, but also trades. So the boys had certain trades, and it could be, you know, working with, um, with livestock. It could be trades, automotive um, trades, working agriculture. And then the girls would do a lot of the home economics and, and doing the, the cooking and, and the baking and, and laundry and nursing, doing all kinds of different activities like that that they thought would be um, useful for, for people. One of the benefits of, of, of attending here truly was um, the regiment of, of being able to follow orders, good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, it, it taught you how, to, how to, to listen, how to obey orders. It taught you what happens if you don't obey orders. Um, the, the, it taught you different aspects of, of um, uh, discipline. It built friendships and the, the importance of hanging on to the culture, the importance of meeting and knowing the people that, that, that were part of this. And people started to kind of take care of one another um, here. It became an extended family. The school saw somewhat of a transition in the 1960s where it got away from the vocational kinds of things and then it became more academic, um, more similar to what you find in other, other schools, I guess, throughout the uh, United States. It closed in 1980 and because of uh, budgetary constraints and also safety considerations for, for earthquakes, um, you know, and they, they still, they're still standing here, which is a testament to, to um, the people that had helped support and build these things, the people that occupied these people, the faculty that were here, um, that, that made, made this place strong, and that, that's what keeps this place going. Um, the school complex is used um, in many different ways. First and foremost to me, as chairman of the Nevada Indian Commission, is that the Nevada Indian Commission offices are here on, on the campus. Then we have the administration building, which is building number one, and that that's, is what's going to be the, uh, the cultural center that, that we have envisioned for the, for the future. Lots of positive things, lots of uh, great support and sharing the steward's story um, with everybody else. It still retains the character and the resilience of what the school was, what it is, and the memories that are, are there for the future.